This is the DSP Armory DSP-10 Titan AR-10 platform in 308 win. This is Lucid Optics' little mo, little baby. Ain't he cute? He's just a little baby. He's just a tiny little optic on the top of there. So what are we going to do? We're going to try to see if it'll blow up, if it'll tear up, if it'll wreck it, if it'll shatter, if it won't hold zero, or what this big bad boy, this beast, will do to the little baby. We're going to give the Lucid Optic a run for its money. So some of the specifications of the Lucid Optics Little Mo are that it has a magnification of 1x. Obviously, it's no magnification really at all. It has a 25 millimeter objective lens diameter. The field of view for it is 24 inches at about 18 feet. The reticle is a 4MOA red dot. So it's, it's a really good medium size, not tiny, not too large, for very fast, quick target acquisition. Obviously, the smaller you get, the more precise it is out at longer distances. The 4MOA dot obviously is going to cover more of your field of view, so it's, it's really good, and I did find that that was the case. It was amazingly good for, for getting quick up on target acquisition for anything, you know, 100 yards and in. Uh, out at 100 yards, I was, I was just like with any other 4MOA dot, so it doesn't matter whether it's Lucid or any other brand, I was getting, of course, a little bit of coverage of the, the whole target being obscured or starting to be obscured out at that distance. Um, it has eight brightness settings up and down. It has a press and hold to turn the thing on or off. Um, now that we'll talk about as a pro and a con here in just a little while, but that's nothing any different than any other red dot optic that has adjustable, manual adjustable. It's uh, parallax free at about six foot. It's got a length of 0.75 inches and then a weight of about uh, 1.4 ounces. It's got a, a waterproof IP rating of IPX7, which I believe seven is, is somewhere around uh, 1.5 meters uh, at 30 minutes, I believe is what that is. Uh, the X indicates for ingress protection is what the IP stands for, that they have not actually submitted um, for dust or, or obtrusion or physical actual entry testing, so they had to put an X you know, to, to do that. So, but it does have a, a, a seven, a seven rating for the waterproof. And that's actually an interesting point to me that we're going to talk about in the pros and cons when we talk about the battery compartment, because that was actually one of my initial, when I first popped this thing on here, was concerns with, we'll, we'll, again, we'll talk about the pro and the con of the battery compartment itself, but was that going to be an issue with water? So uh, it comes with a low Picatinny uh, rail adapter, which I did use when I was using it on the, the DSP Armory, um, both DSP Armory rifles. Uh, I had to to get it up and off of, of the rail and get it into my line of sight. It does actually have the ability for you to use it without the riser and mount it directly to a, a pattern for a pistol, a pattern you know, plate or adapter for a pistol. Um, I didn't do that because I wanted to give this thing a real run for its money and do something a little different with it besides just mounting it on a pistol. I wanted to give it a run for its money on a couple of higher powered rifles. Um, so, you know, your, your mileage may vary on that one, but I doubt very seriously if it, it stood up to the DSP Armory Titan and the DSP Armory Minuteman in 223 and 308, your 9mm or 45 isn't going to do much worse to it than those did. It takes a standard 1632 battery. So some of the pros and cons for the Little Mo, the Lucid Optics Little Mo, Little Baby Mo, 
is, uh, let's start, start with some of the pros. So some of the pros are that it does have this side mount um, to be able to battery compartment that you actually have to put quite a bit of effort into to get it to pop open. Um, the positives for that is that, of course, it takes a 1632 standard battery, which is great. Um, another positive about that is that it's right there on the side. So if you're concerned with, with losing zero for removing your optic to replace the battery, that, that's not a concern for you. Um, another pro is that, as I've mentioned in the, some of the specifications, it's IPX7 rated, which means that not only is the optic and the electronics itself waterproof well enough, but that battery compartment, which was one of my concerns initially, is also waterproof, and it, it is. I mean, I did get it a little wet. I didn't submerge it, submerge it for the full 30 minutes, but I did get it wet enough to where I felt semi-comfortable that in a rain situation it would be, it would, it would hold up just fine. So that's a huge positive for this thing. Obviously, the glass and field of view, um, the amount of glass and area of view you have here, the field of view, was definitely a pro for me. Love that. Um, another pro on it is that you've got clearly marked windage and elevation for up, down, left, right, uh, and it, it uses more the, the United States standard of, you know, if you're wanting to move the dot left, move the optic left. If you're wanting to move the dot up, move the dot up, as opposed to the reverse or adverse, you know, based on your groupings. Um, so that's another pro for it. Obviously, the weight and size of it is a huge pro for this. The battery life, the dependability, the warranty, um, all of those things are all positives and pros for this Just thing. Everything about it, I mean, it was pretty, pretty positive and solid product. I really did, did appreciate this, this particular red dot, uh, and I will be leaving it on this DSP Armory Minuteman, probably as my permanent for whenever I'm doing competitions, or nothing's ever permanent, let me rephrase that, but as my go-to for now, for this, uh, for, for competitions, and for this particular rifle. Um, now, th that spins us into a couple of cons. So I just mentioned as a pro, the windage and elevation adjustments. This is a personal quirk and a personal thing for me. So you're, this may be nothing to you. And by me mentioning this as a con, I wanna be very clear that this is just me. This isn't you or, or whatever. But it is something that, that sticks out in my mind every time that I'm, I'm adjusting any optic, whether it's a scope or a red dot. And it's something that I wanna share with you as the consumer so that you understand it. When you're adjusting for windage and elevation, windage and elevation, there are no interval clicks. So as you're turning the screwdriver, it's just free. Okay. Now that's a thing to me because you have very clearly marked delineations and notches there, divisions on, on it. You can see the little dots or you can see the, the demarcations, but they're just there for looks. I mean, you're not actually, other than where the screw is pointing itself, you're not getting that click in between, you know, quarter inch or whatever out at hundred yards to indicate what you're doing. So you're not getting that. So to me, that is a con. Okay. Now to you, that may be nothing. Um, another con is, and again, this is another one that's me being nitpicky, um, and this is a con for every single, every single red dot optic out there in the world that has a manual up and down adjustment. Twofold, number one is that based on the positioning of where the, the uh, optic is when you're using a 45 degree mount for a rifle, the up down is generally kind of trapped in behind your scope mount if you're using a larger scope mount. That is not really a con, let's be honest, but it was just something that, that kind of gets on my nerves. And the fact that a manual, a manual up down on an optic like that means that you're gonna always have to be cognizant of the lighting scenario that you're gonna be entering. So in other words, I have to know ahead of time what my red dot level needs to be, you know, four clicks up of the six or four, you know, three clicks down for this. Um, and I'm going to have to know 
the lighting of where I'm going. So am I entering in, am I entering into a house that's going to have moderate lighting? Am I going into a parking lot that's going to have overhead lighting? Is it going to be at dusk? Is it going to be at dawn? Is it going to be broad noon and I'm outside? Those kinds of things. Otherwise, on the fly, you have to reach up and make adjustments. Okay. Now, again, to be clear, that's not just the Lucid Optics little mo. That's literally every red dot in the world that has a manual up-down adjustment. To me, that's a con when the technology exists to be able to do auto adjustments. That said, though, there are cons with the auto adjustments. What if you're standing in a room that's darker firing into a room that's brighter or, you know, from inside a home to outside, you know, that kind of thing. So take that with a grain of salt for positive, for negative, for whatever. It's just something to be mentioned and to be talked about. Now, another con is, and, and again, I want to be clear with this, I, I don't know if this is a pro or a con. I, I'm going to go with, you know, dead in the middle on this one. That battery compartment on the side, that's a pro because you can quick in, quick out to change that battery when you need to and on the fly in any given situation. It's a pro that you actually have to kind of use a little something to pry it open with or give it, give it a real good hard oomph with your fingernail. Um, it's a pro for sure. But the con to that is, and it's waterproof, as we mentioned before, the con to that is, and I did try banging on this a little bit without fully dropping the rifle. I tried banging on it, you know, to see if I could get it to, to drop the compartment out or to, to break zero or anything like that. You know, I mean, I did kind of give it a hard time. And the battery compartment never popped open. It never yielded. Now, my concern, and I... I I don't want to do it in this test. Now, I know you guys have seen me in other videos, drop things, throw things, bounce them off the ground. Um, I don't want to do it on this one because of this particular rifle. Um, I don't want to, to damage this rifle up too bad because this is one of my go-tos for competition. Um, but I'm concerned that if I dropped it from a, a pretty, uh, pretty reasonable distance, I'm wondering if that would pop open. Now, I don't know. So I'm not going to fully qualify that as a con. And I'm sure that Lucid Optics has done their homework on that one and I haven't seen any material on it. So if any of you out there in YouTube land have seen videos or seen any information from Lucid Optics or have personally tested dropping this thing from any distances to see if that battery compartment would yield or fail, let me know in the comments below. To, you know, let the rest of us know so that we all know and can be prepared for that. Another pro for this little beauty is the fact of, of its resiliency. So I got to give it to Lucid Optics on this one. And I know this is uh, in, in this day and age with a lot of the super high end red dots um, that this isn't, you know, Lucid Optics doesn't you know, hold the, the market on this one, but I got to give them credit on the little mo. It, it did between the, 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 the Titan in 308 and between the 223, the Minuteman from DSP Armory, me removing it, you know, first off to give it the pro and give it its props for the fact that it survived those, that, you know, very strong and hard percussion and jar from a 308, um, it, it survived. I mean, the, again, the red dot didn't splinter, nothing happened, the glass didn't shatter, I didn't have any, any issues or concerns um, through the few hundred shots and few hundred rounds that I put it through at all. But more importantly, what I did was I zeroed it, I zeroed it at 36 yards, uh, which gives you that good eight inch range from, you know, 25 yards out to about 300 um, or 25 meters out to about 300 meters. Uh, gives you that good eight inch or so center mass impact range where you hit right in that same area. Um, I zeroed it at 36 yards on this rifle, on the DSP Armory Minuteman, and then transferred it off onto the DSP Armory Titan in 308, shot it, and then took it back off and put it in the same position on the, the Minuteman, and it held zero. 
So not only did the Little Mo withstand the, those impacts and that jar and that, that power of the stronger rifle, but it held zero. It did exactly what you would want it to do. So I have confidence based on that coming into competitions that if I needed to, I can remove this from my Minuteman, put it in the case, run to the show or run, I get to the competition, put it back on and it's going to be where I left it. I don't need to get out there and worry about, oh my God, have I lost zero? What's happened? The fact that I'm able to remove it and put it back on. And again, you know, I know that's not exclusive to Lucid Optics, but I want to give them credit for that and I want to give them props for that. So if any of you are wondering how that worked out, that's what happened. I moved it from one rifle to the other, easily held zero. Beautiful. Bottom line, would I spend my money, would I buy this particular optic, and would I trust my life to it? Would I spend my money on it? Absolutely. It's a solid optic that has performed very well for me across a 308 caliber rifle, the DSP Armory Titan, and then across a 223 or on this 223 rifle from DSP Armory. Um, it's performed very, very well on both for me. Um, it's held up and done exactly what a red dot should do. Like I mentioned in all the pros, it quick target acquisition, clarity of glass, so on and so forth. So yeah, I would definitely spend my money to buy this red dot. I like the fact that out of the box, it comes with your mounting option for the Picatinny rails and for pistol mount both. Um, it's just a good optic. It really is. I enjoyed it. I, I plan on keeping it in the rotation and using it. So yeah, definitely. Would I trust my life to it? Yes, as much as I would trust any other red dot optic. So again, we've talked about in some of my other red dot reviews, this introduces an element of break, right? This introduces another mechanical element of failure to whatever platform you're running it on, whether it's a rifle, whether it's a pistol, whatever. Batteries, glass breakage, shatter and, and, and uh, refraction or whatever of the red dot. It introduces another failure option. So I would trust this red dot just as much as I would trust any other red dot with my life. So the answer is yes, with the caveat obviously of it's, it's a red dot just like any other red dot. At this point though, when you're talking about on a rifle platform, I have to go through two points of failure, not to mention a failure of me before it actually becomes an issue. So in other words, my primary optic would have to fail in a fashion. My secondary option would have to then fail as, as an, as, uh, to be used. And also it would have to be out at a distance where it mattered. So in other words, if I'm, if I'm, you know, 25 yards and in, even with neither optic, you can still pretty much get uh, hits on center mass uh, if you need to. So yeah, absolutely. I trust my life to it. I trust my life to it and I would spend my money on it. It's a great little optic. So with all that said, I appreciate you stopping by today to hear what we had to say about the Lucid Optics Little Mo. Thanks for humoring us. Until we see you out on the range, you keep living your dream. Mm -hmm.